And now I turn it over to my colleague, Representative Bruce Westerman. Well, thank you, John, and thank you to our co-chairs of the uh, Health Care Task Force. And, you know, it's been an honor to, to work on this subcommittee with two medical doctors. I'm not a medical doctor. I got a lot of questions. Why do you want to be on the health care subcommittee or on the, the health care task force and on the treatment subcommittee? And the simple reason is because health care affects all of us. Health care affects the, the budget and the deficit that, that this country is running. It's great to have my former colleague Eric Paulson here and Sue, welcome, and to everyone else. Uh, you know, uh, John was talking about his patient, and I think back to my oldest son, who's now 26. When he was one month old, he had a respiratory disease. I'm an engineer. I'm a forester. Hadn't paid a whole lot of attention to health care. I find myself in the uh, pediatric ward, and my son's not getting better, and the doctor says, well, we have this experimental drug. I think that's how she described it. And she said, your insurance doesn't cover it. It's $5,000 a dose, and he needs five doses of it. Do you want to give it to him? Mm -hmm. Well, what's any parent? She could have said, it's $500,000 a dose. Do you want to give it to him? And the answer would have been, yes, I'll figure out how to, how to pay for it uh, down the road. I'm grateful that there were people that were inventing uh, drugs like this that I'm sure is probably readily available now that it just the short time before my son went into the hospital, it wasn't available. And I'm thankful that there were innovators out there looking for cures that made a difference in, uh, in my family's life. And there's, there's a lot of, lot of families like that and a lot of people that have been affected. So, uh, you know, as we look at, at the job of this task force and of this subcommittee on the task force, and the roles that we play. Uh, I got baptized by fire on health care when I went into the state legislature when the Affordable Care Act was being implemented. And uh, uh, I learned more about health care through that experience, health care policy, I will say. Um, and then, you know, I, like I said, I came here and I, I started out on the budget committee and I realized that, you know, one of the biggest drivers in the debt is what's happening with government-funded health care. In, in Free Ops 2021 World Index of Healthcare Innovation, the U.S. ranked 29th out of 31 high-income countries on the fiscal sustainability of its, of its health care system. Uh, we're ahead of only France and Japan. In 2019, the health care spending accounted for 17.7 percent of the GDP and accounts for roughly half of federal spending when you take into account programs such as Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, Social Security checks that are spent on health care costs, tax credits, and the spending that goes toward the interest portion of the national debt. So if we, if we want to fix our debt problem, we have to fix the, the health care issue. And right now we're going in the wrong direction on making uh, health care more fiscally um, good, improving that, and we cannot sacrifice the quality of care that people expect in the innovation. I think when we start doing that, we're actually going the wrong direction and we will see the cost of health care go even higher. And that's why plans like uh, Senator Warren and Senator Sanders' uh, Medicare for All that's seeking to control uh, cost uh, and increase coverage even more, I think that's just going to originate or, or develop into a single payer system that's going to drive down quality and drive up, up cost, which are the things that we definitely don't need. And I think that's the path that we're on right now. Uh, Speaker Pelosi's HR3 uh, uh, tries to do uh, the job by negotiating uh, with payments. And we, we see things like trying to cap uh, cost on the, the insulin that was just uh, a bill that passed out of the House. And we ignore things like uh, PBMs. So we've got to get to the root problems and make sure that we're promoting innovation, that we're promoting fiscal accountability. And, and I think what we've produced out of this subcommittee is going to roll into the big task force and we're going to have a great health care plan that 
uh, addresses all of those issues. How do we lower drug costs for Americans? Uh, how do we unleash American innovation on new drugs, on new devices, and, uh, and on diagnosis and on the way that uh, treatments are delivered? And as uh, Dr. Winstrup said, you know, American-made medicines and medical equipment. Uh, I, was, I was shocked to learn when the pandemic started and I had people in my district wanting to produce face masks and the fabric that goes into an N95 face mask is made by an American company but was all in a warehouse in China. And we couldn't, we had the people with the equipment to make it, but we couldn't get the, uh, the basic fabric to go into it. So uh, these are the kind of issues we need to be addressing and I'm just glad to be the, the outsider, the non, non-doctor on the, uh, on the task force. But we, it, yeah, in, uh, to, to defend engineers, we're problem solvers. So we'll there take the, uh, the expert advice from my colleagues and solve a problem. We'll take that.